Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In this lesson, we will talk about how different plant bioindicators can be used to detect the quality of the environment. As we said in previous lessons, that almost every type of living organism can be used to indirectly assess the quality of the environment. You can see in this uh, diagram that uh, there are almost every types of uh, organisms that can be utilized to assess the quality of the environment. For example, you, we can use microbes to detect the quality of the environment. We can use different plants to detect the quality of the environment. We can use animals as well to detect the quality of the environment. And obviously, whenever we, we can choose different type of uh, organism, uh, uh, they are best suited to different types of uh, environments, to different types of contaminants, to different types of studies. Plants, ki baat karte hai, plants are very sensitive to uh, different changes happening in the environment and they can be used to recognize different stresses that environment is having. Obviously, plants are mostly photosynthesizing hai, and uh, they almost lie 100% uh, on the environment and uh, they have to utilize all the sources present in the environment to grow, to flourish. So, uh, plants therefore are uh, said to be uh, perhaps the best bioindicators that can detect the, uh, that can tell us the quality of the environment they are living in. The presence or absence of some specific plants or other vegetation provides ample information about environmental health. You can see here, simplest kya hai, hum dekh sakte hai ki kya koi species, plant species kahi pae ja rahi hai ya nahi pae ja rahi hai, ya aska number kam hai, zyada hai, pehle ke nisbat, indirectly we can tell uh, what is going on in the environment. Um, this is a simple, simplest approach. For example, lichens. Generally found on the trunks of trees and rocks react to ecological changes in forests including changes in the structure of the forest, air quality and climate. For example, increased concentration of sulfur dioxide, nitrogen etc. We have talked about that in plants, mein, uh, jo, one of the most used bioindicators are lichens. They have high surface to volume ratio, they can easily be used especially to detect the quality of the air they are living in. Uh, we can see here that uh, uh, they respond very quickly even to very uh, small changes of uh, different toxicants present in the air, for example, sulfur dioxide, nitrogen and many other such contaminants. So for air quality, lichens are perhaps uh, the more uh, most preferred choice. Another example is of Wolfia globosa. It is an important tool for showing cadmium sensi sensitivity and contamination. Plants, we have talked about different plants have different abilities to respond uh, differently to different uh, changes happening in the, in the environments. We have talked about that there are many plants that have ability to resist certain metals and there are also the ability to uptake them. You can see here, uh, there is a plant that uh, uh, responses to different concentrations of cadmium. Obviously, cadmium is a toxic element. A high concentration of cadmium can be uh, life threatening as well. So, uh, if you if we can study this plant, we can indirectly study whether there is a high concentration or low concentration of cadmium in that environment or not. Marine plants can be used to detect the quality of uh, the marine environment. Bohot sare organisms aise hai marine environment mein jo ke bohot rapidly respond karte hai to different changes happening in their environments. Uh, especially the planktonics uh, living there was that are used hote hai to detect the quality of the marine environment. So you can see here marine plants provide valuable information to predict the status of the oceanic environment as they are immobile and rapidly obtain equilibrium with their natural surroundings. Phytoplanktons uh, yeah, planktonics in general uh, uh, they cannot move on their own they usually move along with the tide of the uh, water so uh, they uh, uh, along with this and many other things they, they uh, uh, respond very quickly to the changes happening in the environment so perhaps that's why they are best suited to study aquatic environments uh, like marine environments now, uh, humne kaha ke simplest approach kya hai, we can just count the number of a certain species of plant or any other living organisms and we can uh, start assessing the quality of that environment. Not only uh, the number of certain species can be affected due to changes in the environment, but uh, the diversity of a certain genus, the diversity of certain species can also be affected. So, both number and diversity of a certain group of organisms can be analyzed 
to detect uh, that whether some environment is doing well or some harmful changes are happening in that environment. So you can see here there are so many different plants and uh, phytoplanktons that can be used to uh, uh, for this purpose. For example, Eugenina clastica, Ficus tortoise, and Traclon anus. They indicate the pollution of marine ecosystems. So again, as we discussed before as well, for every ecosystem, for every environment, there is a certain organism that is best suited to study that environment. These were a few examples how plants can be used as indicators. I will see you in next lessons.